should not have been misusing your kindness and took your kindness for weakness. That's right, that shouldn't have happened. But, but now you can't hold that against him because you are setting yourself up to have stuff held against you. So you shouldn't even keep track of how many times you forgive somebody. But Pastor, this is 12 times he's done that same thing. He comes in with the same raggedy excuse. All the time, the same excuse over and over and over again. If it's real, if he's really, if, if he's really sincere, or she, then the Bible says you should forgive. Matter of fact, you should always forgive those who are truly repent. No matter how many times they ask you. Oh, suddenly got quiet. <laughs> Because real forgiveness follows God's path. Because God has forgiven all our sins, we should not withhold forgiveness from others. Realizing how completely Christ has forgiven you should produce a free and generous attitude of forgiveness towards somebody else. Because you were able to accept forgiveness means that you should also be willing to give freely. When we don't forgive others, we're setting ourselves outside and above the law of love. That Christ talks about. Well, let me see if I can close this. Let's talk about the song of cleansing. The song of cleansing here in verse 6 and 7. Back in Psalms 32. Therefore, let all the godly confess their rebellion to you while there is time that they may not drown in the flood waters of judgment. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. David's cry here, his signing, has been replaced by singing. He's singing now. He's surrounded by songs of deliverance. When, you, when God starts to move on your behalf, you start to recognize that God didn't hold my attitude against me. God didn't hold my bitterness against me. Look at what God is doing around me. Look at how God is bringing me. Look at how God is protecting me. Look at how God is feeding us. Look at how God is clothing me. You suddenly have songs of deliverance and wherever you turn, you discover something to sing about. It used to be that whenever he turned, when David turned, he saw sins. He warns us that we should pray to God for forgiveness. It says, in a time of finding. Now, this may have two meanings. And, 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 you know, in a time when we find our sins and in a time when God may be found, if, if, if you allow sin to accumulate, it festers and it turns putrid. How come some people walk around so burdened because they let so much stuff accumulate? So God will have to step in and chasten us, according to Hebrews 12. David is no longer afraid. For God is his hiding place. Let troubles come. I'm not afraid. Can you hear? So from that 6th and 7th verse, David sort of loses it all and he goes into a shout of confidence because when you get to verses 8 and 11, which closes this discussion today, but in, in verses 8 through 11, the Lord, the word of God says, the Lord says, I will guide you. Now this is a shout of confidence. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. You don't have to try to figure out where you're going. You don't have to try to figure out the best pathway. You don't have to try to figure out the best strategy. You don't have to try to figure out what's best for you. This word says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. I, I got good plans for you. It's your plans that you keep falling on. You keep messing it up, but I got good plans for you. I will advise you and watch over you. Do not be like the senseless horse or the senseless mule that needs a bit of a bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. He's shouting here. Look at verse 11. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All you who obey him, shout for joy. Shout for joy. All you whose hearts are pure. We need pure hearts. God is speaking to David and assuring him that he will direct his steps. Oh, what a blessing. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, what a blessing. He leads 
me, I don't have to try to lead myself. Yes, I messed up for the first 50 years. Thank you, Lord, for having mercy on me for these last years. You are now leading me, and I, I'm allowing myself to stand back out of the way that you might lead me in the path of righteousness for your name. See, God wants to guide you. God wants to guide me. God wants to guide us, not with a heavy rod, but with his eye. Yeah. Or what? See, listen, listen, listen. An obedient child, listen, an obedient child watches his parents' eyes to see what they really is. Can you hear this? So if you got a child and, and you're not putting on for the church, but you 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 have tried to raise that child up in such a way that they have respect and that they know that you're the parent and not their best friend. You're not trying to be their best friend. You're trying to be their mama. You're trying to be their dad. When, when you raise your child that way, when you're not trying to hang with them, you, know, you ain't kicking it. And me and mom, me and dad, we were just kicking it together. No, we weren't. We ain't just kicking it. We can do that after you get grown. But when you're a child, I gotta raise you up. Well, well, that child knows something instinctively. If they're getting ready to do something or thinking about it, they look over and catch your eye. Hello? And if you just look a certain way, they back up. Even if their friends are trying to get them to do something, they're going to back up. They're going to say, no, I can't do that. You just act like you can't do that. I can't do that. Well, how come nobody saw you? Yeah, they did. You didn't see what I saw, but did they? they saw me. <laughs> see, that just, she caught your eye. He caught your eye. So what I'm trying to tell you is that God wants us to operate that way. The saint must constantly stay under the Father's eye and live to please him. Look to see what God is saying. In verse 9, David talks about two extremes. The horse that rushes ahead impulsively and the mule that lags behind stubbornly. The horse that rushes on. The mule that holds back. Christians need to avoid both of these patterns of behavior. You ought to walk with the Lord a step at a time in loving obedience, keeping your eye on his eye. Can you hear me? This is going to help you if you want to be helped. God wants you to know that when you walk in loving step by step with him, then you don't need a bit of bridle in your mind. Some, 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 some saints, I'm talking about church folk now, they got to have a bit of bridle before God can control them. They got to have problems. They got to have, have uh, disasters. They got to have catastrophes. That's the only time they'll look up is when they're flat on their back and can't get up. That's a bridle. That's a bit that the Lord has had to put in your mouth. He loves you that much. 